Hello, good morning, everyone. How are you doing today? I uh, hope you, you will do uh, good. Today, we are going to start a very important topic, which is called as Hora Shastra. This video is going to be on English, simple language, so that every audience can see and understand this very important Jyotish too. Our astrology, our astrologers have make it very complicated for common man to understand. Why? Because the basic parameter which is given in astrology is Hora. Hora means time and the resources. That's all. And I will explain you the fundamentals today about the Hora Shastra. And also I will try to explain a chart in front of you so that you can understand the Hora Shastra beautifully with your own chart. Okay. Hora Shastra, the main two luminaries which we are having is sun and the moon. These are the only two major timekeepers. What does it mean? The sun is governing the day 12 hours and uh, the moon is taking up the role of the night 12 hours. Total put together in a, in a day, we are having 24 hours, which is completely controlled by these two luminaries. And there are 12 signs. So odd sign, is ruled by male and the even signs are ruled by females. Odd sign is ruled by odd. All the odd sign are governed by the sun and the even signs are governed by the moon. And each sign is having two major uh, divisions which is first the uh, the each house is divided into two segments. One is day, 12 hours, and the night, 12 hours. That's all. Simple concept. So we are having 12 houses. So 12 into 2, 24, which is your day, which is called as Hora. Okay. Now, before understanding the Hora, the concept of Hora, we should know why these two planets are given in astrology. Let us understand that. Sun is the person who is giving the resources for the houses, which is called as Aditya. And there are 12 Adityas. And the moon's role is, whatever the given resources are, the moon has to maintain and sustain the resources. That's all. So it is like our father and mother in our previous uh, tradition in India. The father is a person who goes out, make money and give it to the family. And the mother is going to uh, nourish the family and sustain the family. How beautiful, correct? So this is the principle of the Hora Shastra also. Now, uh, in the Hora Shastra, as you already knew now, that, that 12 hours is governed by the day and the 12 hours is governed by the moon. And there are other five planets are given. And we should know what is the purpose of those five planets because otherwise you will not be knowing what is the reason for these other seven planets given in the uh, astrology and we never consider Rahu and Ketu because one is above the societal norms and the other one do not want to have any sansara which is Ketu and the Rahu always want to cross borders so he don't want to live in the society or he want to do something which is beyond the norms which is not acceptable to any societal system or culture. Okay, now let us understand. The sun's light has to be divided into the day because you cannot directly approach the sun. Sun is a huge knowledge source. Can you ever see a, a sun directly from your naked eye? You can maybe, you can see for a few minutes. After that, you cannot see because he's having such a brilliant uh, light rays which you cannot see it directly, correct? So we had taken two people to distribute these light resources. 
like for example if the electricity is produced it has to be distributed so that it reaches to your house similarly we are have we are having two planets to do that job one is jupiter the and the other one is venus jupiter is giving the knowledge from the sun to give to spiritual purposes to have higher wisdom or higher knowledge and the venus is an asura guru so the sura guru jupiter is giving the person the human kind what kind of knowledge he should have related to god religion spirituality etc and also attain higher wisdom and intelligence based on your buddhi and versus the asura guru guru's job is to give knowledge which re required to live in this current uh, where you are born that is earth so for living in earth you should have some kind of intelligence otherwise other people may conquer you so the asura guru's job is to give that knowledge which actually make you to live in this world that means venus is only responsible for this sansara those who have chosen sansara and he is giving all the related knowledge related to the sansara very good now the sun is receiving giving the light and uh, he is telling that i will do the job only for 12 hours after that the moon should take the responsibility for the night so the moon is receiving all the light from the sun and getting prepared take charge for the night duty so once she is coming for the night duty she is having two more people to have the distribution of night light so which is saturn and mars so they are taking the responsibility for distributing the uh, night light into the world and since it is most of the people do not require those light because we will be sleeping during the time that is why these two planets are called as malefics because we don't want their uh, uh, light anyway and uh, we may need only some small light for uh, just for sleeping purposes that's all and we don't need them directly now how to determine that uh, in our chart is a most important topic today so i am going to explain that through a live chart and also i am uh, going to take a female chart which has come to our group asking for predictions so i am going to use her chart for the predictive purposes okay now i will take you to the actual lessons come come along with me okay now i will show you the screen one moment now you can see my screen so and uh, i will also put the screen in such a way that you can see my uh, table okay now uh, i will take my spotlight okay now if you see i have given the degree of signs the 30 degree each sign is having only 30 degree so from aries is having 30 degree and taurus 30 and so on until pisces having 30 degree and the 30 degree is divided into day 15 degree and the night 15 degree so now if you see the degree of signs which is mentioned here i have mentioned that aries if it is a aries lagna if your birth ascendant that is lagna ascendant is between 0 to 15 degree uh okay before going into the hora shastra i also want to give you the fundamentals that the hora chart d2 chart the principle of the hora chart itself of construction is based on the leo sign which is the sign of sun which is the mula trikona and the own house of the sun so when sun has taken the leo then you should naturally take the uh moon's houses cancer so that is the only two houses in which the hora shastra has been constructed and we also should only have this chart for predictive purposes now i am going to use this hora shastra in d1 chart to make you understand how this has been done using the knowledge what we gained so far okay now if you see aries if it is a birth is an aries ascendant 
then the 0 to 15 degree is falling under Leo. And if it is Taurus, then it is Cancer because Taurus is an even sign. Aries is an odd sign. So we all knew that Kala Purusha starts from Aries and ends with Pisces. So Aries is an odd sign. Taurus is even sign. When you start counting, you can see 1, 2, Taurus, 3, Gemini, 4, Cancer, 5, Leo, 6, Virgo, 7, Libra, 8, Scorpio, and so on. So all the odd numbers are ruled by the sun. That means the sign Leo is a ruler of the sign. Whereas the even signs are ruled by Cancer. So the when you take the even sign, the first 15 degree always will be ruled by the Cancer. And the next 30 degree will be ruled by Leo. And in the odd sign, the 0 to 30 degree, uh, sorry, I have mentioned here wrong, it should be 15 to 30 degrees. Sorry, that is a mistake over here. It should be 15 to 30 degrees. So 0 to 15 and 15 to 30. So if it is 15 to 30, it is Cancer. So I request members to just note down that this is a mistake here. So it is 15 to 30 degree, it is Cancer and so on. And the table you can see. Now, if I get a chart, how to start, I will explain you now. This is the female chart, which I have received. And uh, one moment, I will just pull along this table, which I'm don't, I don't need it here. Okay, I will put it here somewhere. Okay. Now, if you see, she is born in uh, Aries Ascendant. I will also put it here somewhere so you can see the chart very clearly. So you can see she is born in the Aries Ascendant. So members who are seeing from North India, please note that this is South Indian chart. In this chart, the procedure is very simple. This is Aries. Normally, this is where the, now the, uh, the pointer is. That is the first sign called as Aries, in which she is born. And you have to do clockwise direction to the subsequent houses. So I have marked here 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, etc. These are the house sequences. So the 12th house is the house of Pisces. And the second house is the house of Taurus. So now if you see, now this, she is born in Aries, okay? So Aries is here. So I marked AR. And she is born in 23 degree, 46 minutes. So I have to go to this chart to make you understand what is her. So here, if you see, this is 15 to 30, correct? So she is born in 26 to 30. So she is ruled by Cancer. So Cancer means she is ruled by Moon. So in her chart, all the uh, uh, houses which are ruled by Moon, Mars, and Saturn are powerful. And all the day planets, Sun, uh, Jupiter, and Venus are not powerful. So that means the first house is ruled by, the Aries is ruled by, the Mesha is ruled by Mars. So if somebody is watching from Tamil audience, it is Chavai. Mesham Chavai. So she is born in uh, Aries Ascendant with the Moon Hora. So that means Moon is a responsible night planet and she's, uh, her light of Moon is distributed by uh, it is distributed by two planets which are Mars and Saturn. So we know that the, this particular house is ruled by Mars. So there is a tick mark here. Now, if the first step is I, I have only taken the ascendant and the rest of the houses without planets. Now, in the next step, I will put her planets as per the birth chart and see what is the problem in her life. Okay. Now, the empty chart, I just put the Aries and I put a tick mark here. And the second house, which is ruled by Taurus Rishabha is ruled by Shukra. So Shukra is a cross for her. So here you see self, appearance, body, path, life, etc. is tick mark. So her body, her health, appearance are okay, good. But if you see here, income, wealth, family life, 
food, drink, speech, eat, eating, etc. is having a cross. So it shows that there is a problem. What does this problem indicate? It indicates she is not able to feed that house or could not be able to sustain the house. So what is Hora? Hora is second house. Second house is a house of female. So the female's job is to nourish the area or feed area. So what does your mom do? Mom has to feed the people in the family. If you are not feeding, you will be, you will be dying. Simple. So same is a chart also. Now if you see, every chart will have only six tick marks and six cross marks. What does it indicate? It indicates the, again, the God has played a very beautiful role here. There are six kinds of weaknesses for human being. So wherever the crosses are there, the six kinds of weaknesses will appear in the human life. So what are the six human weaknesses? Anyone can tell us what is the human weaknesses? So the human weaknesses are, I will explain you what is the uh, six weaknesses. Okay. Now if you see, Okay, now here it is already given. One is lust or desire, anger, greed, moha, attachment, arrogance, ego, what do you call as ego or arrogance, jealousy. So, calm, kod, lobe, moh, mother, and matsarya. So, these are the Sanskrit words which are associated to the enemies of the mind. So there are six enemies of the human being, which are the elements in the Kali Yuga also. Because of the six weaknesses, the humans suffer in those areas, which are not given as a, our resources, or uh, these are all the six weaknesses. Wherever the tick mark is given, those areas, we are actually doing good. Supposed to be. But we don't know after the planet's been placed. Now I have taken only the ascendant and distributing the uh, crosses and the and the and the uh, crosses and the tick marks. So you see, there are six tick marks and six weaknesses. And why the six weaknesses are given by the God is because the sixth house where the Mercury is exalted. So what God intend to say that if you want to conquer the six weaknesses, you should try to learn more. You have to acquire a lot of skills to overcome these obstacles because the six weaknesses are the obstacles of the human being. So everyone should come out of these six weaknesses and sustain in this human world. And then your actual problem will be known. What is there? Now, if you see the second house for this female is having a cross mark. And the third Wherever the Mercury, okay, now I have not given one more clue. When the distribution of day and night happened, we had left the Mercury because Mercury is only the responsible for changing the day and night. For example, in the day we are having the morning and from morning there is a change to afternoon. Though so this change is happened by Mercury. Who is changing this day that is morning to afternoon is Mercury. And similarly, in the evening, we are having an another change from afternoon to evening. So that evening and again evening to night, that change is done by Mercury. So Mercury is being a change and fickle. We always put a question mark wherever the Lagna is from the person, wherever the Mercury houses are, which are ruled by Gemini and Virgo, which you are already aware, probably, uh, Midunam and Kanya is ruled by Mercury. So these are all the question marks. So here, this female may have a question mark related to anger siblings, competition, skills, daily rounds, short trips, and sales. And you also see the mother, emotional life, home, real estate, fixed assets, vehicles, academic degrees, etc. is a tick mark. Fine. The children, creativity, spiritual practice, honors, and mind is a cross. Health, enemies, litigation, digestion, power over the enemies is a question mark. Then you see the spouse, that is very important, married life of a person, there is a cross. 
So wherever the crops are, you don't properly maintain or feed that house. When you don't do that, it will it will die in due course of time. Very simple. Okay. Now eighth house is having uh, tick mark. So she may be interested in the occult sciences, or she may be interested in the partners' resources. She may be interested in inheritance, endings, career changes, etc. So ninth house higher education is marked by a cross. And the spiritual development or the guru is also a cross. So wherever the cross are, these are all the problem areas for you. So you have to acquire some kind of skill to overcome this. Now, the 10th house is a career, success, reputation, etc. 11th house is an important house of income and also the special life income from job and career, etc. 12th house is a house of faraway lands, that is foreign and also living in the foreign, enlightenment, hospitals, imprisonment, etc. Now I am going to take up her chart and distribute the planets now in this chart to see where is her problem is all about. And also we are going to see her king and the queen in the chart, which is the most important planet in any chart. Okay, so I'm going to see that. Now you can see I have marked some uh, pictures over here. Now, the Aries uh, chart, she's having Mars, she's having Saturn, and she's having Jupiter. Now, the Mars and Saturn are the night planets and having cross. So, Aries house inside the Mars and Saturn is making a cross. So, what does it mean? She, it means she, is a very, it, she should be a very enterprising, very bold, and a very strong individual because of the Mars placed in the own sign. So Mars is very strong for this lady. And also she's having the eighth house very strong. So she's capable or adaptable to uh, uh, live uh, in life with the changes. So whatever the transformation one should take up, she can take up very easily because these two houses are being ruled by Mars and she's having a very strong tick mark for both the houses. And Saturn is again a tick mark. But Saturn is ruled for by 10th and 11th house for her. Now, whether that would be very good or not is different because here the Saturn becomes a Maranakaraka Sthana, Saturn in the first house, and also it, it is uh, debilitated in this sign. So the, the question mark of career and income is still there. It is not so good. And you, all, you can see that the Jupiter is not allowing her to take up the practices because Jupiter is having a cross. So Jupiter is a ninth house and twelfth house. So ninth house is a house of important house for the female for uh, children and also the dharma of marriage for the female. Plus the twelfth house is a very important house for her partner when she is getting married. So that is also being a cross. So being a cross, she will be pulled along with this areas in life plus ninth house is the father normally so the father also is having some kind of an issue because of which her life is marked by some kind of an issue over here now let us see the second house where you are having cross and she don't have a planet over here whenever there is a planet there will be the issues which is related to the planet also in the houses so you can see the Uppapada, that is the 12th house, uh, when she get married, you can see that is cross. So the marriage platform, the first marriage for her would be uh, based on the income and wealth. Somebody would have given her a tip that go and get married to a very wealthy person because he's having a, you should have a family life and her marriage should have happened due to income and wealth resources of the partner. But how the partner will be should be from the second from it. And there is a question mark here. So whether that particular partner will be good for her will remain a mystery. We don't know. So that we will see it later. Okay, so there, is, there is no planet. Whenever there is no planet, the Lord is responsible for doing the activity for the house. So here there is no planet, so we will also leave it. The fourth house is having Rahu. And you can see there is... Uh, the Aruda of the sixth house, which is fallen over here. There is some kind of trouble for the mother. And the mother is 
taking a root of above the societal norms and something related to that. I'm not going deeper into it, but she will be taking some roots which are not accepted to the society. And there is, because of that, uh, um, uh, uh, because of that step by the mother, there will be some kind of an issue for this little girl because she's have suffering intensely of the sixth house weaknesses because of no mother in her life. So she, her mother emotional life has been battered due to this issue from the Rahu placement over here. So I don't make any tick mark or the cross for the Rahu you can see because it is out of societal norms or she, that Rahu wants to go out of the border. So she also want to go out of the house a number of times and the mother also having the same. And in, in her case, the Rahu is the queen. So the queen is in a trouble, deep trouble. And she's been troubled because of the issues coming from the house, the issues which are coming in her, uh, in her happiness in life, the issues which are coming in, uh, in from her mother, the issues which are coming to uh, the academic degrees also, the, the issues are coming up whenever she is in a house. So whenever I am interacting with her, I always listen that I always have a lot of problems in my house. I'm getting arguments frequently. I'm also fighting with the house inmates, etc. She is completely not happy with the house. What is that? What is that? Uh, and how is that happening? It is happening because of the Rahu's placement and the Aruda, very bad Aruda, which is placed in the fourth house. You can see the fifth house where the children, creativity, spiritual practice, honors, and the mind uh, is having a cross. She's not happy with it. And she's neither happy with the resources and the uh, image or uh, the fortune which has been given by the God to her or the God or the father. So here the health, enemies, litigation, digestion, power over enemies, etc. Plus there is A4, which is the education Aruda, plus the education also been taken with a lot of changes and the twists and turns. You can see from that because of a question mark over here. And you can see that uh, she's having a spouse, business partner, foreign trade, etc., with a cross with no planets. However, people have got some kind of recognition due to her marriage. Whether that is good or bad is left to see. But this is a bad recognition because everyone around her in the society, she they are talking about the recognition which she got in the first marriage, which is not good because the marriage is having a cross. So she's not feeding that house properly because of that. Uh, or not taking the food of given by the uh, in this house. So because she's not eating, what will happen in due course of time that will die. And this is exactly happened. And the uh, second, the eighth house is uh, the house where she's having the uh, tick mark, but there is no planets here. And the ninth house is again having a cross and uh, there is no planets. You have already seen that. Now there is the 10th house, there is an Aruda. That is the Aruda Lagna. So in the Aruda Lagna, there is Ketu. So basically, she's not enjoying that much the life because Ketu is a Moksha Karaka. So she, the Ketu wants something very, very higher. It is actually going down because when the Ketu is pushed downwards, Rahu is pushing upwards. Ketu is going downwards. When the Ketu is going downwards, it will be put under a lot of pressure because the Ketu wants them to learn about the life, the Lagna, uh, etc. Then it becomes completely uh, a different knowledge because when you are going down to the earth, there is nothing actually. Because in the down in the earth, you can see only some few rocks and minerals and some water. What is there? So her career, success and fame and reputation and the father's father, visible actions, etc. is ruled by Ketu and that is also the Aruda Lagna and I am I put uh, uh, some kind of a computer with a person working over there it indicates that uh, uh, it can indicate that the work which is indicated by Ketu so in case she wants to do work 
it will be or either it could be astrology or spiritual subjects or it could be related to something which is related to mathematics and calculation or the ketu wants to do into microelectronics and software these are the three lines where the aruda lagna is associated with and she must be interested in astrology to the great extent so now you can see the other one now you see uh, the moon is having a cross sorry it is having a cross moon is having a cross fine but the moon is placed in the eighth house from the own house so it is already given an indication that the fourth house is completely damaged for this female and the second this is a this is a king for her chart which is venus and the venus is the second and the seventh lord for this female which means family life and spouse and the king is having a cross so it shows kind of a problem here the house uh, which is ruled by the shukra is also having a cross and venus itself having a cross so it shows that is some kind of a very deep problem with the venus and mercury is having a tick mark which is okay as far as uh, this uh, tick mark is concerned but if you see the 11th house where the king is placed i always used to say king and the queen are very very important in any chart the king itself is having a battering then the king is not happy and the king is frequently checkmated by somebody you see and the queen is the person who is responsible to go out and do the job she herself is in a bad shape because she is in a, in a mother emotional life home etc so the the queen is asked to remain in home unfortunately due to the various circumstances which are related to the home okay and you can see the other one the sun which is having the baranakaraka sthana placement and uh, it is also the 12th house which is uh, double cross here sun is also cross and the sun's house is a cross sun itself is a cross and the 12th house also a cross so when she brings a partner astrology already had given a clue that it is going to be a disaster because it's having a three crosses and not only that the sun is in a uh, maranakaraka sthana and also you can see that it is a uh, hospital it is imprisonment it is called as bandhana it is like when she gets married the married life will be like a jail so what she will do she has to come out because she will get it nicely then she will get it get out of that because she will not be happy with it and the venus who is a karaka of marriage also is in the cross and the second and seventh is already in the cross so you can understand that she will not be able to feed that house properly if she gets married which is the first marriage i am talking about so because of not not uh, feeding that properly what will happen the house will die so that is what happened because she is now as per her communication she could not able to live along with the partner and the partner and herself is going to get separated so what is the issue because of this is about the venus which is a shukra who is a karaka of marriage the second lord and the seventh lord and also the the giver of marriage is also not good the partner is not good and the second house which is very important for any female chart is also not good the seventh house is not good so these all three important houses are got a battering and the fourth house is though it's a tick mark it is having a rahu which is again a very disturbing factor on the fourth house resulted in a collapse in the first marriage so i don't know how the astrologers read the chart these days without our shastra anything what you what you come out and read a chart will be a disaster so today i am going to give that important subject knowledge about hora shastra and how to read the chart through hora shastra then only you can able to get it nicely otherwise it will be a tough job and uh, and if you see the aruda lagna which is uh, the image in which the people are uh, associating her she is already known uh in our society for her uh, uh, not interested in uh, in the in the married life she is a little ascetic and um, also she has been known for some uh, knowledge related to astrology uh, very surprisingly correct so this is also from the 
uh, Aruda Lagna, which is a camera which is shown here in the 10th house. Now, if you ask me really, uh, what is good in this chart? Basically, the Raja is completely uh, in a very bad situation. And from the Raja's Lagna, you can see the from the Raja, this taking as a Raja's Lagna, the second house itself is a problem. And the uh, fourth house is again a problem. And uh, seventh house is again a problem. So from the Raja's also house also, you can see that it's very, very severely damaged. So due to which the first marriage will be collapsed as a result. So that is how the chart has to be read and understand. Because in any chart, this is very, very important case study, uh, which I have given to the people so that you should know that how to solve your own problems, because nobody is going to help your life problems. It is you yourself have to manage. So everybody should know that this particular lesson is going to be a beautiful lesson for those who want to learn their own chart in a very simple manner. Now, there, is there any way to strengthen these uh, planets? Of course, there is. For example, in her chart, if she is coming to astrologer and asking, "Sir, I want to strengthen my chart where the, for the weakness, and I want to overcome those weaknesses. Can we? Can you give some kind of remedy?" So, what I will do is the first remedy should be given for the shukra, because. The shukra is very, very badly afflicted. So the shukra alone, if I'm giving some treatment, medicine, then the shukra will be first to be cured because the shukra is a very important planet for a female chart. And that too, in this case, the king itself is Venus and the Venus is in a double, triple crosses. Then you can see there are two houses in crosses of Venus and one three one cross here. So there are three crosses for the Venus. And uh, Jupiter also is having three crosses. So the very two important planet which is uh, distributing the light of the sun uh, and the day planets, you can see the sun, Jupiter, Venus are all gone into a problematic year. So uh, as I told you that the day planets are responsible for giving resources and uh, Night planets are only to sustain so and nourish. In her case, the resources itself was not been given and it all are getting blocked. So I need to open up the resources to her and give, give to her so that the things has to work out. But uh, that, that is a lengthy process for which only we always say that uh, when you come to astrology, identify good astrologers who can read your chart properly and we all spend some money for various things unwanted expenditure we do we go to hotel we pay some bills heavy bills we go to cinema theater we go again for heavy bills but we never never understand our own life issues and how to solve very very sad and we, we are not ready to go to any uh, good person who can able to solve your own chart uh, and uh, okay now i will explain you how to improve the uh, the problematic planets is by using beautiful mantras okay second is to understand which house is having a problem and to do the mantra associated with that house and also uh, what kind of gemstone is favorable and that too, the gemstone has to be recommended with very proper reading again, very deep reading you have to do. Because if you are recommending a very wrong gemstone, that will be completely twist chart altogether. So you have to be extremely careful. So the first, first thing I want to go with the gemstone, I will be always recommending the mantras to elevate and first of all to heal that particular graha in which it is having a problem. So in this chart, you can see the sun is severely battered. It is already in a Maranakara Kastana. It is very difficult to rectify because the source itself is sun and she has so much of problem with the source. But what is important is the distribution is also got blocked. That is Jupiter and Venus. So first and foremost, I cannot do anything on the source, but I can at least, whatever the source is giving little, I want to get the distribution elements, Jupiter and Venus. 
to give little to this female as a resource so that she can able to sustain. I hope you enjoy this video and I am sure that you will prepare your own D1, D2 chart to understand where is your six weaknesses in your chart and also place it nicely. First, as I told you that uh, go as per the step here, find out which is the Lagna degree of yours and see this table and find out where is your, uh, uh, where is your uh, uh, Lagna fall in which uh, aura and which aura is responsible for you, whether sun aura or a moon aura, that's all. Here I did a mistake here. This should be 15 to 30 and, uh, and see the degrees accordingly. And then once you do that, then come here, then you will understand the meanings of the chart and you construct your own chart and put uh, empty uh, a ascendant and see the crosses and make sure that you are making six cross, six, cross, six cross and six tick marks and find out which are all the areas where your inherent weakness is given by the God. And you see then after the, putting the planets over here and find out where are these weaknesses originated and to attack these weaknesses by learning okay and mercury is also given for astrologers so before going to an astrologer you should learn a basic astrology and that is what given to you today and here is my chart how i construct a chart here i put a lagna which is a time based so i always use hora here so this is lagna so you can see see my style so sun is rising in the east and immediately the time starts. So here the time which is given is Lagna. So you can see my chart also, how I prepare. But though this is not my chess chart, the chess chart is a different story that I will come to you later. Thank you very much for once again being uh, responsible for uh, joining me for this wonderful session. And I hope you must be having a lot of questions. If you have any complicated questions, then let me know. And also, those who are watching this video, prepare your own chart. And if you have any doubt, I'm sure some people may also have doubts. If so, kindly ask in the uh, comment section. I will try to help you out. Thank you very much for once again joining the Hora Shastra case study one. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much.